Hey guys, it's Christina and this is Vox and Guest and I am really, really excited because today I am talking to an amazing band or at least most of it. Uh, this is the Dion Powder Band. Say hi, fellas. Hi, fellas. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I knew it. I knew it. Saucy Australian. So all the way from Australia, it is early in the morning over there. I'm so thankful that you guys got up early on a Sunday to talk to me. Um, so why don't we just go around quickly? Everybody, I know who everybody is, but why don't you all introduce yourselves rather than my doing it and feeling like a, a school mom or something. Nice. I'll go first. My name's Dion. I live in Brisbane and uh, have done for a very long time. And I play guitar and sing and write songs. Now you two have to fade it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Ryan. I play keys, among other things. We've been in the band for us. We do... Uh, I play keyboard, organ, piano, that kind of stuff. Um, been with the guys for just over a year or so. And, yeah, living in Brisbane all my life. Um, write and record songs, but in here I make the sparkle. I like it, the sparkle. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm Charles. I hit things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get much more complex than that. Uh, no, Dion, <laughs> Dion and I have been playing together for nearly 13 years. Um, and then... We've been, yeah, playing his original tunes for the last, oh, maybe five or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we are missing a brother in arms, so I will let you mention Corey, who could unfortunately not be with us. So who wants to talk up or talk down Corey, whichever way you guys roll as a band? <laughs> Corey is our, um, he's our energizer bunny. He brings the energy on stage and, the, uh, and the, he's the lord of the low end. But uh, the man is the man is a constant ray of sunshine. He's the ace of base. Yeah, ace of base, and he's he off doing us we something. Need to, need to enjoy he's... being on stage every time. It's great. Okay, <laughs> so well, all right. Though people are going to have to go watch you just to get to meet Corey in a virtual sense. But he is off doing something important with sausages, and that's all we're going to say because people <laughs> need to to have that question in their heads for the rest of their lives now. So so I'm sure you guys have done a million interviews and you've probably been asked this question a billion times. I'm just gonna get it out of the way and then we'll get to stuff that's more interesting, okay? So you can answer this individually or as a band, but has Taylor Swift ever written a song about you? <sighs> not to my knowledge. Okay, all right, you're, keep, you're playing it safe though. You're not definitely mm, saying yeah. no. Hedging my bets. It's difficult with Taylor. You, do, you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement and then three months after the relationship finishes, she writes the song about you. It's difficult. It's uh, The paperwork's in place. That's all I'm allowed to say. You have a <laughs> level of, of, of detail of this that sort of uh, gives a little bit away, but okay, all right. Now we got to figure out what song, but okay. All right, Ryan, are you a heartbreaker too? Or? No, but I, I've heard her um, in concert while playing another gig and hearing all the screams for them presumed that it was for our band loading in in a dodgy <laughs> pub but <laughs> no i don't think it was about me you were just swift adjacent and just yes. lapping up the the extraneous sunshine all right you know what or, or adjacent to swifting, yes. i so think funny. i think it was for you i'd and take it right i want to sure. make taylor feel bad I, what do you guys think i think that's uh, absolutely yeah I mean, that's what she said when I asked her. So, you know, okay. All right. So, yeah, I'm sorry for the boring, you know, been asked a million times question, but let's get to the real ones. So how did you guys all meet and get into a band? Well, I was playing solo shows around Brisbane and uh, I met Charles through one of our previous jobs, like working at, what would it be the equivalent to? Oh, yeah. An electronics retailer, basically, but you know, yeah, like Walmart or whatever, okay. like a yeah, Best Buy or something. Yeah, like, like a Best that. Buy is probably okay. your closest and, uh, closest comparison. What I is it called, anyway? Place, and we, we ran a couple of tunes and said, "That's it." And I'll see you at the gig. So uh, it's a funny story, actually, because it was like I'm a I'm not a drummer. Um, I'm a piano player and guitarist more than um, I play the drums, oh, but. Like we we sat down and it was like, yep, yeah, let's let's see what works. The original plan was I'll play keys and Dion will keep going with his guitar. And I was like, oh, there's going to be work involved in this. And I'd literally only maybe a month before bought an electronic drum kit to record some stuff, my, my original music at home. And I sat on that and went, yeah, that works. And we had a gig the next week. 
<laughs> and that was it. So you just become a drummer because it was less work. Okay. I like it. I like <laughs> less work. Much, I'm the you know, thing. <laughs> just like I bought an electronic drum kit. Next week I had a gig. <laughs> oh, the tale as old as time, right? There yeah. probably a lot about that too, Ryan. Because if if Charles hadn't picked up the uh, the drum kit, you might not be talking with us tonight. Or and I could be playing drums, sort of switching around. I think we've sort of battled with an idea of of changing it up every now and again. But, okay, so you guys are not yeah. only genre promiscuous; you are instrument promiscuous as well. All yeah. right, I like it. I like it. So, but you're so. How did you come into the fold then, Ryan? Since you're the quote new guy. Um, I've been sort of playing in and out for sort of solo gigs and with a couple of bands and stuff for quite a few years. And then um, through some mutual friends, I met met with Dion a couple of times. And then we realized that we knew some of the similar people together. And uh, we met at a function uh, about a year and a half or so ago, nearly two years. And um, he said, hey, we're doing a, a gig and we're thinking about doing some keys with it. And uh, I hear that you can play some keyboards. Would you like to come and play this gig with us? And Charles doesn't so want said, to because it's too much work. So. Yeah, it's too much work, too much caring. <laughs> so I said, yeah, sure, I'll come and learn learn 20-odd songs for a gig in a couple of weeks' time. And I did, mostly. And um, we played and <laughs> basically afterwards went, this was good fun. Can I be in the band? And, and we said no. Went, yeah, <laughs> and then he, no, then he kept work. asking uh, and kept um, <laughs> It's so up at Standing outside your homes in yeah. the rain, crying. Yeah, in the and I just wouldn't go away. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm actually still not in the band. I'm still auditioning at the moment. Um, yeah. But hopefully this goes well. I know. It's, it's well, like probation. This is yeah. this is could be your make or break here, you know, just, just get ready. No, I mean, I think you're probably safe because what I've determined so far is that you are willing to do a lot of work. And somebody in the band has to be besides Dion. So there you go. What about Corey? Is is Corey uh, allergic to a lot of effort too, or is he? And and how did he come into? I, I uh, since Corey, he's not here, I guess we have to speak about him with the Ouija board or whatever. Corey, um, Corey isn't a bass player. He's a keyboard player and a singer. What and, is um, happening with you? Guys? <laughs> you do realize you were allowed to play the instruments you usually play in the band, right? Like you knew that was an option that you didn't have to. I just swear we, we do know how to play the actual instruments we do. We, okay. we can. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, sure you do. Okay. <laughs> I love how it's like. Tell us about your bass player. Well, he's not really a bass player. Well, tell us about your drummer. Well, I don't really play drums. Like, are you all really actually just like? three beavers in a trench coat or what is happening right now? <laughs> so okay so Corey, Corey, who is not actually a bass player except for yeah. you what happened with Corey? well we did the um it was pretty intensive he was getting some bass lessons off a guy that we hired as a session bass player and um oh, he came he came cool. in i ran him through the bass parts of the tunes and um he did a great job of picking those up and filled some gaps and um He's got really good harmony lines that he sings. But we, mm. everybody's a good singer, so we can sing four-part harmony at gigs, which is really funny. Mm -hmm. We don't practice the cover gigs that we do, but um, when we play an original stuff, yeah, we rehearse that stuff, and it's pretty tight. But um, yeah, he's he's great. He's a great bass player, and he's a really good singer and keyboard player. And well, he's a lot of fun to be around. He, he, he does the Energizer that. Bunny, right? This is this is the bunny of the group. But I mean, yeah. that you you mentioned one of the things that kind of struck me because I think, you know, as a singer, I see a band that has four members and all of them sing, and I just go, oh, that must be so nice because <laughs> there's so much that you can do. And I mean, I, I think one of I would say one of the hallmarks of your sound is the harmonies. You know, a lot of bands. They miss it. They shy away from it. They don't have the capacity for it, you know, and if in a recording you can do it, but when you're live, you know, short of a pedal or something, you're sort of stuck. So that must be a lot of fun for the four of you to just all be able to chime in at the same time and harmonize. So do, do, you, do you use that even more to affect when you're playing live than you do on your records? Charles is nodding yes. Definitely. I, I've, I've had to really pull back from singing a lot of harmony when there's just Dion and I doing duo gigs, we like to try and fill the sound out a lot. So, you right. know, uh, I I sing a lot. But uh, when we're doing the original stuff, I have to make a conscious effort to really pull back and only only do it where it's needed. Um, gotcha. But, yes, we, we absolutely do. Um, I think uh, why not if you can? 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, you why not play keys if you do instead of drums? So I kind of feel like no matter what you guys decide to do, you'll just be able to magically do it. So um, you, you could go either way on that. But yeah, I mean, I really I mean, I, I should say up front, um, I am a very definite fan of the band. I, um, you know, I do a lot of deep dives into the music for all of these interviews. And, you know, while everybody's great, you know, some music is more in a genre that I would ordinarily listen to. And I can't say that you are more in a genre that I would ordinarily listen to because you guys are in like 11 billion different genres <laughs> all at the same time. But that's one of the things that I love about your music. And um, so you had the new album come out. That was what, May 31st, Headwaters? Awesome, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I we're going to play it later, but it, a tough choice for me um, on the album. My favorite song, um, I think I have to say, is Wolves in the Hills. Um, love the song. So catchy, so radio friendly. Um, you know, and you guys, I mean, I know Dion, you toured for, what, three years throughout the country. and But um, there to me, there's nothing that keeps what I'm hearing from your band from being something that should just be on the radio here and everywhere because I, the music is just so good. And, and I love that you just bounce from genre to genre to genre throughout your, I mean, really the EP too. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Dion, cause it's, it's mentioned as a solo EP, but the guys, at least I think Charles was on that. Who, did, who, who did, or did you do that? The whole, uh, time to be human by yourself how did that uh that's really out? tricky that's first of all thank you for saying such nice stuff about oh, us. you're that welcome cool. you can send um, my check i'll give you the address no i'm kidding <laughs> yeah please, i've got your mail address yes. <laughs> checks in the mail there, there you go. But, um the when we started doing festival work with the original stuff mm -hmm. um we met a guy in the audience who felt the same way that you do about the music he was really keen and excited about it and we kind of leaning back a little bit on our chairs going, yeah, we played the stuff and it's cool. But he um, put some money up and got us to, to do some recording. And uh, I ended up in the studio with the producer and we finished it between the two of us and, and, and another drummer, actually. Okay. So um, Charles um, hasn't played drums on a recording yet. <laughs> <sighs> I'm, so, I'm gonna have a headache by the time this so, interview is. So, Let me guess. Charles played the klezmer, um, <laughs> naked, upside down, during some sort of circus act. I don't know. Like it seems like Charles is. Am I close? Am I right? Were you not upside down? Was everything else pretty much on point? Or pretty well, pretty close. Yeah. You haven't played on. I have not. On. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just. How do you feel about that, man? Is that all right? You happy with that or? <laughs> Oh, look, yeah, I, the therapy sessions are going well. Um, I was say, please I'm don't sure I'll the band on our show. Oh my I'll come God. to terms with it eventually. No, <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. So, totally. so the way that it works here in, uh, uh, in Brisbane, the music scene isn't quite as alive as we'd like it to be. And we mm. can't, um, I, it might be the same there. I don't know, but we all have day jobs and Charles has got three under the age of, I want to say Seven. five. Seven. Sorry. Oh, sorry. so you haven't slept in a very long time. <laughs> very, very long time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, I gotcha. And the reason why Charles has got to leave today because he's got to go open jars. He's got to scratch the back of his hand. He's got to do some star jobs. I heard you have arm intensive things on your on your on your agenda for today. Yes, the um, surgeon's cutting my shoulder open uh, tomorrow morning, and uh, I will not be drumming for the next three months minimum. Oh, so no, I'm sorry, yeah. but I hope it's, it's to, better it's after it's done. <laughs> Oh, this, is, this is a helpful <laughs> cutting into your shoulder, and right? it's not. It is sort of, okay. Good, not some sort of horrific, uh, you know, thing that's being <laughs> just done to you. But uh, well, I hope that goes well, and and uh, you. I guess you can, I don't know, maybe pick up the kazoo or something while you yeah. wait. Yeah, why not, right? You're not a kazoo player, but you do play kazoo on the next album. So, Correct. so um, <laughs> Ryan, really, you got to, you're, you're, you're dominating this conversation. And I, I feel like, uh, you know, does Ryan always talk this much, guys? Is this, uh, I'm kidding you, Ryan. <laughs> looks very confused. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so. Feet, I'm thinking, I can't read much, to be honest. I'm sorry, yeah. you broke up for a second. What'd you say there? I think Ryan's internet connection is a little bit dodgy. Can you guys hear Ryan? Yeah, maybe. No. No. Okay. 
Ryan, you look like some sort of really fancy model right now. You just keep posing, but all the poses are really good. So I don't know if Ryan can hear us, but at least look at this pose. This is like a perfect screenshot. He's got a great smile. Yeah. Usually when I freeze on on Zoom, I, I look like I've just smelled something horrendous. Yeah. So this is, my, eyes are, my eyes have rolled up into the back of my head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's never, ever flattering, yeah. but I have the feeling Ryan is going to pop off and then pop back on. That's my guess. But uh, so mo moving on from there a little bit, I wanted to ask you, Dion, well, all of you really, but... Um, you have a tagline on your website that says stealing music back for art. And I think I know what that means. I know what it means to me, but I wanted to ask what it means to you and the band um, because it's, it's a very interesting thing to have front and center on your, on your website. Well, I wanted a, a sentence that would inspire, you know, to open the mind's gate, um, you know, and then receive the information. So kind of curious, you can't be, angry or judgmental when you are curious so mm, exactly. for that reason but what it means to me at least is um if the music industry the way it is there's so much content and mm. it's very difficult for anybody really to make um a, a decent living out of it and <laughs> that is stopping people from producing songs that don't have any uh any commentary uh, or any yeah, any social commentary, which is what I think art is, whatever medium of art, there mm -hmm. is a social commentary. Um, mm -hmm. And when you consume popular music from maybe the last 20 years, we're not really talking about much except for body parts, guns and and, and money. Um, yeah. Drug. So yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not about that. And, I, you know, the songs that we write are things that, I, you know, I've been through, the songs that I write, and I think about them and I rewrite the lyrics a lot of times. The lyrics are very important to me in the song. Mm -hmm. And then when I choose the genre for the song, um, it needs to lean in to create like a harmonic resonance. So sure. this is this is the song and this is the, this is the lessons and maybe they're, I try to bury them a little bit so people can, you know, enjoy it. Right, but more it, palatable for the masses, but yeah. On yeah. third or fourth listen, there's kind of, um, maybe there's something going on here. That's the plan. That's the perfect plan. But yeah. then there's the genre and then all the things, all the flavoring on top kind to identify and, and bring out, you know, the art in, in the music. Yeah, answer. I mean, that, that, that is, you know, and, and, and listening through your catalog, you know, one of the things that resonated with me is exactly what you just said, that you're, you're tackling some things that are pretty intense and pretty meaningful, but you're not doing it in a way that bludgeons people over the head with it. You know, somebody could just mm -hmm. sit there and listen to the stuff and groove along and just pay no attention to the lyrics or not really delve into what you're saying. And then people who want more, there's more there. You know, yeah. and, and I mean, to me, that is art, too, that it's just it's it's uniquely experiential. Right. I mean, you you come to something from the frame of your own perspective and what you get from it is what you bring to it to it to an extent. So I, I really appreciated that, you know, you've managed to mesh things that are insanely catchy with things that actually have meaning, um, which yeah. I think is part of why I like you guys so much. So and, and you mentioned um, a little bit about it, but I wanted to get into the process, right, of from the germ of an idea down to the insanely good production that you guys do, but all the way, how do you go from, okay, I got an idea for a song, what's the process of, you know, are you the only one, Dion, writing the lyrics, or, you know, does everybody come in with their own parts? Like, how do you get from idea to finished song? And I, I'm hoping all three of you will chime in on that one. I might go last, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ryan, since you've talked so much, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you talk, Sorry, yes. <laughs> talk again first. My internet first. decided not to work, so I'm on to my, um, my hotspotting because, you know, I had that Australia, feeling. so internet is So fun. let's hear what the um, not keyboard player thinks <laughs> about that. <laughs> um, for me, I think, because Dylan does a lot of the recording himself, puts it all, does it all the, um, the songwriting himself, finds all those deep concepts for it to be able to craft the song. Um, and then we sort of find the niche for how we're going to interpret it. So when it comes to like a live setting, for example, we take the parts that are already evident in the song, go, okay, what can I do? Can I do the exact same thing? Or can I take that and then sort of go a little bit more? Mm. So like for me, I'm, I, I would hesitate to say better keyboard player than Dion, but yes, you know, but when when it comes up with a really cool, say it, Ryan, say it. Yeah, when it comes when it comes up with a really cool, fine. Really you're cool better than me. Whatever. 
<laughs> now you guys have it on video. So when you yeah. go into contract <laughs> negotiations, you can hit me up for the footage. So yeah. So when okay. So really cool, like riff or something. You know, we'll take that and we'll do the exact same thing or watch the essence of it that's necessary, and then go okay. How can I add that little bit more on it from mm. a perspective of someone who's been playing keys for twenty five years? Like exactly taking that taking that concept and then making it, I suppose, better. You know, taking it, yeah. making it, tweaking it, and making it, I suppose, yeah, that higher level for from what the original was because the album itself and the songs are so tightly crafted mm. and put together where every single part is essential. Mm-hmm. You can't sort of go like my my sort of thing is always more is more on a keyboard and it doesn't work. <laughs> and I sort of feel, oh well, if I'm playing two notes and holding that for a half a minute, am I not holding up my weight and should I get paid less now? So <laughs> paid per sometimes note. Yeah. If I play everything, it's like, well, yes, I, I can hit those notes, but I mm-hmm. don't need to to make this song better. So it's a good crafting process of what is more, what is less, pull back push out you know what to do i love that i mean it it, it, it's it's um you know it sounds like writing poetry to me right you know where every word has a weight every word has a place and you can't just dump a paragraph in the middle of that so i love the way that you that you look at that and i also think you're you know you're bringing you to it as well you know which is great when we play live i'm i'm delivering the tune i'm playing the guitar part and and when when um when ryan's doing something that is totally um not already in my head mm-hmm. I, I laugh to the point where i can't get the lyric out because it's just so bloody oh, no. good <laughs> okay at least, so good. at least it's good <laughs> it's, oh, happy, it's, it's happy it's happy it's, it's happy it's, that, well, that, i mean that that's impressive to me too because since you do clearly have such a vision when you're putting something together it's nice that you are enjoying a different vision rather than feeling like that's not how it's supposed to go. Cause I, I know a lot of musicians who are that way. So that's, yeah, uh, I'm we're, glad you're open. Yeah, definitely not that band. Yeah. <laughs> and Charles, what about you? What's your secret sauce? Uh, I, I've been in, at the ground floor of pretty much, definitely all of the songs on Headwaters and most of the ones on the EP as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it's usually Dion's like, we've, we've been doing a covers gig and cause oh, I wrote this new song yesterday. I was like, okay. And we just play it like w- at the end of a set or something. He just he'd oh. play. I'd play some drums. We just get a feel of what it'd sound like. Um, and it's very cool seeing them evolve from literally. Oh, I scratched this out, or I recorded a little thing that I thought sounded good on my phone mm-hmm. um, to become these fully fleshed, full production numbers that are on the albums. But. Um, I suppose I've had a little bit more input than Ryan does. I mean, it's still very much Dion's singular vision, um, sure. but I, I've enjoyed being able to, you know, you know, I've suggested bits and pieces here and there. And, and again, like I, I've, as with Ryan, I don't necessarily always play exactly what right. is on because there is a lot of amazing production on this album and we can't necessarily replicate that with four guys. Um, right. So right. I think we all have altered what we're playing a little bit. Um, and, again, it's uh, similar to what I was saying with singing before. I generally find I may have to pull back a little bit because I tend to overplay a little bit when we're doing a duo just so it sounds really full right, and you're filling there's it out, lots yeah. going on. Yeah. But when, when we've got four-piece band um, and everyone knows what they're doing and what the parts are and everything, I yeah, I generally, same as Ryan, I think, no, I don't need to play that much. <laughs> Right, right, can, right, right, right. I can I just can relax just a little. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. but uh, no, look, I think it's very, like I said, very much Dion's singular vision with how he wants these things to sound. But we definitely, I mean, I've had, like I said, I've had a little bit more input than the other boys probably just because, you know, I've been playing with Dion for yeah, you, such you, a long you, time. Yeah, you've had 13 years um, to, to, to get in there. So, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's a, but I mean, that's really, this is, this is very cool because, you know, anytime I see a band that's named after a member, you know what I mean? A, a member of the band, I should specify. Because, uh, yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah, there we go. So, and uh, let me. I'm gonna. But anytime I see a band that's named after one of its band members, um, there's no good way to say that now. I've ruined it. But <laughs> there's <laughs> always band. the. Come on, the, just put it out there. It's the there's always the, there's always the question of you know, okay, is this you know the guy or the woman? 
And, you know, then everybody else is just sort of, you know, doing that person's bidding. It's, you know, sort of in the service of their vision. And, and, and what I'm hearing is that you guys have found a way to work together and bring your own approach and your own talent and your own experience to it, but in a way that preserves Dion's original aesthetic and his vision for the song. And I, I think that's rare, actually, because you, I mean, Dion, first of all, you must be nicer than a lot of people who name their bands after themselves, because um, I, I, you know, I've worked in bands like that, where it was very much like, no, you're essentially a session player, you know, you're a hired gun, you come in, you do exactly what I want you to do, and then you go away. And, you know, there's a place for that. But um, there tends to be a lot of turnover in bands like that. And you guys have longevity, which um, speaks highly to I think the relationships you all clearly get along really well even with Corey who's not here <laughs> unless he's buried under someone's house at this point you're just not telling me this is some uh, but uh, so I mean in in terms of um, gigs are you going to be doing a lot of live stuff around headwaters or have you already been doing that because i know you you play out a lot but um you know is there what's the agenda for that since not everybody's going to be going on the website and looking up the the uh the i want to very quickly first of all just say dion powder band dion didn't actually want to use that name we pressured him into it okay um, even cooler okay uh we said it's the most representative thing like they're your songs yeah, you've put the hard yards into writing and producing them. It should be, you know, let's just pop the band on there to recognise everyone else. And we, like, you know, his, his magnanimous self said, no, 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 let's come up with a name. We're like, no, nah, that's the name. That's it. That's fantastic. Um, I love that even more. You know, that's great. Because, uh, you know, I figured if you, it, it also makes sense too, even if you had done it, because, you know, you started it and you were writing everything and then people were coming in and out. But that's tremendous that you guys wanted to, honor your buddy like that and, and it's the, uh, pretty, pretty cool and in the band there's the, you know the culture is be kind to you, yourself be kind to each other and be kind to the planet that's how, mm -hmm. that's 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 why i write the music that's my mm -hmm. why to mm -hmm. communicate that in whatever from whatever angle we want to communicate that from but in any relationship in any team the mm -hmm. culture is more important than the goal or the result um, if we're learning and growing and communicating and sharing the ideas that's where the excitement is yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if you're moving boxes or you're writing music. The relationships are the most important part of the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's connection, right? That's the whole thing. Yeah. With everything, really. I mean, that's that's the that's that's what it all boils down to. But I mean if, Yeah. If I have something I to say the, about I did, I did push for the, the Ryan's keyboard spectacular band, but it didn't <laughs> didn't land as well considering I didn't write the songs. And it wasn't really spectacular. So, short of that, though, and you don't really play keys. So, yeah. So, all four of us play by trade. So, yeah. We workshop all the ideas first, though. We do. You just put instruments into a hat, and whoever picks it out plays that instrument for the day. Hey, that wouldn't be a bad, that'd be a cool idea for a show. You do that for a live gig, exactly. Right? Just call it instrument roulette or something, or instrument lotto. And then there you go. Yeah. You can send my proceeds from that idea to the same address that my other check is going to <laughs> so Dion you were going to add something there I think uh, I forgot what it was though oh no we were talking about connections does that ring any sort of a distant bell no Ryan you <laughs> ruined it you ruined it Ryan the one time ruined, Ryan sorry. talks poor Ryan <laughs> 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 Ryan had one thing to say and it was just it just sucked the idea that's okay I, I I interrupt myself all the time and then forget what I was saying and can't remember either Is part the, to get back yeah. to so <laughs> why, why are we here again yeah I know. who are all <laughs> of you what, is, what am I yeah. doing here what's today but uh, I wanted to ask you too wow. about oh remember. you remembered I'm sorry yeah, yeah I knew if I talk long um, enough no that's great <laughs> well I do have something to say about the music I tend to speak more about um the the how the other person's feeling about the input and the actual input itself. So, so I've, what um, do you mean by that? Well, it's because, and the guys mentioned it before, all the parts are like this on mm -hmm. the, on the album. Mm -hmm. So if it's, you know, if it's missing one of those bits and I'm, I'm hearing, cause I'm hearing for that, that makes sense that what I'm doing. And if that isn't there, then I try to, you know, just put that bit back in place. So mm -hmm. that's, um, and I've, I'm really conscious of going, look, I, can we just maybe pop that bit in? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, you, you seem like a real craftsman that way, you know, that all the elements are there for a reason. And so if something's missing, it must throw the whole thing off balance for you to some degree. So because I do a lot of solo and duo work, there's a, I'm really heavy on the right hand um, with guitar for rhythm, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. the left hand's playing kind of like a bass part and right. the harmony at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I pull that apart and give that to other instruments to do. Right. So there's the song really. And if one of those bits <laughs> isn't there, it kind of does, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It. Yeah, it doesn't work. That makes a ton of sense. But I mean, I, I, I wanted to get back also to this idea because it, it is one of the distinctive elements of your music is, is how non wedded to any genre you are. I mean, I'm listening through and I'm hearing, and I, again, whenever I compare bands to other bands, it's always in a complimentary way. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> even if you guys don't know or like these bands, you'll you'll take it in the in the spirit in which it was intended. But I'm hearing Gin Blossoms, I'm hearing Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks, I'm hearing Santana, Surf Rock, Pulp Fiction. You know, um, same way is very much like almost like a Day in the Life by the Beatles, and 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 there's all this different sound and all these different grooves and all this different um energy that comes and and i'm wondering how how collective i mean i, I, I think i sort of have an, an idea based on the fact that that we've discussed how much this is dion's vision but do you ever think you know do you plan from a genre and then decide to go in that direction and write a song for it do you start with lyrics and then you figure it's going to fit best into this type of a vibe how do you decide which of the many, many, many genres that you pull from, you're going to, uh, you know, which comes first, I guess? Well, uh, first, to frame that up, um, you look at how music's consumed now and mm -hmm. you, people will listen to one tune off a playlist that's designed right. for a specific, particular genre. So you right. don't really buy an album and it's very rare and I'm so appreciative that you've heard it, you know, from Oh, yeah. Stuff. And and it works really well that way, by the way. I don't want to interrupt you, but people people who are watching, don't just, don't be a tourist to the album. Listen to the whole <laughs> thing. Listen to it in order. I feel like it's, especially from where it starts to where it ends, there's a real emotional path mm. that you've laid out. So I'm, I'm not going to interrupt you, but definitely want to make that point. Don't just cherry pick songs. Go sit at least once and listen to the whole thing. So go ahead, cool. Dean. I'm sorry. Um, and then with that in mind, it liberated me to explore the opportunity in that chaos. Mm. So um, mm. I, they're not with that permission. I look at the tune and what's the tune trying to say and what genre or what, what transport device would work best to <laughs> deliver that to people. And that's, mm. that's how that came about. And then I wanted to make sure uh, the rhythm the, the rhythm dictates what the genre is. The, the, the acoustic guitar part that I wrote the song on mm -hmm. dictates. So for that song, like Same Way, mm -hmm. it's very start-stop. It's crashing. It's jolting. Um, yeah. and, um, and this is how I, I – I'm, basically I'm just an angry guy and the whole thing's a middle finger to genre. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no pigeonhole all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like – you keep them guessing type of thing, but at the same time, look after them, you know, look after the listener. So yeah. It's, it's, it's I think like the vocal's really comforting and it should be a safe place. I think it's, it's worth pointing out as well that, yes, there is a whole lot of genre hopping going on, but it still sounds... Cohesive. It sounds like one thing. Like it doesn't sound like... Yeah. a compilation album of different artists. No. It's all, no. you know, yeah. it's all very much of a, you know, of a of a sound but with different genre. Absolutely. And yeah, and I think I think for me the way that I experienced really both the EP and the albums or were the album was that it's um it almost gives you a sense of déjà vu song by song, but it doesn't sound derivative. And it doesn't sound apish in any way. It sounds, it's almost like you've given the listener a comfortable place to hear something new from. So it's, yeah, wow, this sounds like, you know, have I heard this before? No, but you don't sound like anybody else. And that that right there, my friends, is a feat in itself because I've heard, you know, a lot of mus musicians you hear on the radio, you know, where it's like, Oh, okay. So they're doing 
you know, they're doing an Ed Sheeran or they're doing a this yeah. or they're doing a that. And like, it's not, you know, even when I say, oh, I get a little bit of a Stevie Nicks from, um, you know, Afraid of the Dark or whatever. Like, I don't mean it sounds like a Stevie Nicks or a Fleetwood Mac song. Mm. I mean, oh, I, I recognize something about this. And I mean, you know, I'm a huge Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks fan. So right away you had me. And then it was its own thing completely. But it's it's almost like you you know you you give somebody like a little security blanket, <laughs> like don't worry, we're, I'm not gonna take you. You know, we're not doing some sort of psychedelic death metal, whatever. Like, which could also be very cool. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it it has a, a home, you know, to start from. But then you're turning it into something new, and I just I'm I, I'm sorry, I'm talking more than I usually want to when I interview people because this is about you guys. But I really I hope you get the sense that it's because I genuinely love the music. Like, I really I put it on and I was like holy shit like <laughs> I would drive around and listen to, and I now I do but I would drive around and listen to this in my car and 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 it's it's all of you you know it's the vision but it's also what you what you're doing with it and so I mean that well, I think, that's I think that's the, yeah the, the commonality with the songs is the fact that they all have a groove and yes. they're all good music yes. like it's not there's nothing that's out of place it right. sort of has that movement through the songs where you listen to it it's like oh that's another good groove Mm -hmm. Sounds good. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. has that link of, like, obviously Dion's voice and playing through it, right. where there is that commonality from start to finish. So it means that when you are listening to it, there's nothing that's jolting. Mm -hmm. But everything feels familiar, but not overdone. Right. It's all sort of something that you can relate to all the way through. And it means that when we translate it live, it's a show. It's not a collection of little songs like a covers gig where it's like, okay, mm -hmm. here's a Brian Adams song. Here's a right. you know, Jesse's girl and stuff. Right. Like it's just, it's, it's there is the a thread. Band yeah. thread. Yes. Yeah. And even that means then when we insert the ones from the EP and other new songs that might come out, mm -hmm. there's nothing that feels, Oh, what are they doing there? It's just, right. Oh, it's just the next version of Dion power band doing the next song. You know? Right now. That's um, really well said. Yeah. I'd like to say at this point as well uh, that when I, I did the tunes here at home, um, mm -hmm. I'd I'd do the guitar part, the bass part, and the keys part, and the guitar parts, and then uh, I'd guide vocal. I'd send it through to the producer that I work closely with, mm -hmm. and he added all the other elements to it, and mm -hmm. then mixed mastered it. So the producer and I were speaking a lot about what you just spoke about. And it it's it's so cool that you've you've listened to it. You like fourteen hours across the planet, and you've <laughs> listened to the album, yeah, yeah. and you've brought it back to the initial conversations that I was having with the producer, with his ten thousand oh, hours cool. in in his space, yeah. and how we wanted to present it. Where there's the, where I said before, there's the opportunity in the chaos of what the music industry is, mm -hmm. um, and take advantage of that and leverage that. So. We can jump on Spotify, we can jump on Facebook, and we can speak yeah. to awesome people that are music yeah. lovers. And and then, you know, yeah, that is full circle. Like right now today, that's full circle for that for that concept. That's very that cool. That's very cool. Well, that, that, that's a testament to you guys and, and to you especially, Dion, that, that what you, you know, it, it's such a labyrinth to get from an idea to a finished album and you've managed to put out into the world what you intended and and that's who does that right <laughs> like, you know, that doesn't usually happen that way and and but it, what's cool is that i don't think you've limited anybody in that way i mean that that because you know you've taken what i think of and i think you know the four of us are in a, alignment on this is sort of what is a um a negative about the music industry at this point that it is so buy the slice you know and nobody sits there and goes and buys the wall and just goes home and listens to the whole thing through anymore or whatever that everything is kind of a a la carte you know musical experience that you've taken that and you've turned it around and made it an advantage that okay mm. you know so today we're gonna be funky and today we're gonna be like a new wave synth kind of like imperfection the first time that came on i was like whoa, wait, what the fuck is this? I'm like, but in the best way, you know, it was like, I, I'm getting towed the wet sprocket vibes. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting input from the dog apparently, but like, you know, and that song is so rhythmic. There's so much about the percussion and, you know, the, the, the bass and the drums that drive it and all those other pieces. And, you know, and then the next song is something completely else, you know? And, and mm -hmm. I, I think that, that the fact that you have something that can 
that can work as independent songs, but also still works as an album. And it's also different from itself and from each other, you know, and I think what Ryan said, it, you know, does it come down to ultimately? And I think, yes, it does that it's all good music and it's all got a groove, you know, whatever that groove sounds like, um, you know, you're not all of a sudden coming out of left field with something that, that, you know, and honestly, even if you did <laughs> at this point, I would trust your band that like, okay, yeah. take me on a new thing. I'm, I'm in your hands. I, I'm, yeah. I trust you. I'm, I'm happy to go along with it. But I, I, I did want to just shout out because the production on Headwaters especially is so, so good. I mean, it's mixed and mastered to within an inch of its life in the best way and everything breathes and you hear there's sonic space for every single thing that's in there. Do you want to shout out your, your, I mean, you know. Yeah. So the, the, the business is make music, not war. And um, it's one gentleman, his name's Nick. And I met Nick in my first hit out with um, Time to Be Human EP. Uh, okay. And we met in IRL, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meet studio. space, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, I instantly um, had a connection with Nick. And mm-hmm. it's you, the one those ones that you don't describe. You don't have to say anything about the music. Um, you both going into the tune on the same angle mm. and exiting the tune on the same angle mm. um, to the point where it was the, when he'd mixed and mastered, I vow, I think it was two o'clock in the morning when he finished it. I was, uh, this is 2016. Yeah. And this yeah. Is the first thing I've ever heard that's done professionally. I was in tears oh, wow. of having the guy, Total Strangers, you know. That's um, amazing. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that song too. So remind me when you're done, because I wanted to come back to it and- did you have? Did, were you? I'm going to have to go. I'm so sorry. Oh, Charles! Um, it's been. Okay. Thank you so much for having us. Um, oh no, it's been and a you're pleasure. In, you're in good hands with Dion and, <laughs> and kind of Ryan. So he might when, talk a little when, bit. When more. does the other drummer that you were talking about sign on? Is it as soon as Charles? No, I'm kidding. Charles. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah just gonna jump into tomorrow. both boxes. But listen, Charles. Good luck Thank on you. your surgery. Heal well. Rest well. Try not to yeah. lift anything or hit anything. Yeah, you know, um, needy kids. It will be fine with an arm strapped up, not being able to pick them up. It'll be. Yeah, happy. but I, just, I see no problems with that as a parent mm-hmm. myself. I'm sure yep. they will completely understand this. <laughs> all being under seven. So good luck with that. Yeah. But really, thank you so much for-, for No worries. Today. Thanks for having us. And thank you so much for your support as well. It's awesome. Oh, 100, my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, bye, Charles. See you all. Okay, bye. bye, Charles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I, um, we were just talking. Did I interrupt you, Dion, or were you still- I was just saying that um, with, with Nick, the producer, who mm-hmm. I am, he is super, super talented and super gifted. You don't, I acknowledge that you don't meet, you know, he's really- Amazing. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. He's just finished a huge project with a, a, a kind of big name artist over here, a whole bunch of duets. Oh, um, wow. Joe Walsh plays on it from the Eagles. Y- y- yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I yeah. know the name. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, All um, right. Ian Moss, who's a guitar, really good guitar player over here. Um, it's a Kevin Borridge album and he's a blues artist okay. from way back anyway but so does it have Dion and Ryan and Charles no, and Corey no, on it because that's really the, I mean that's what the people yeah, want it's it terrible terrible. Yeah, it's, yeah Joe Walsh it's still you know yeah. whatever I mean you know anybody yeah. can play with Joe Walsh or whatever yeah I don't know so I vow okay um I think what that's the first song on the EP um I think it is yeah and and I I had to ask you because given the lyrics and 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 everything Tell me, rather than my asking a specific question, tell me the story about that that particular song, the lyrics of that, because I'm wondering if it is what I think it is. So <laughs> over here we had a referendum for gay marriage, mm-hmm. um, and I wrote a song for that, but there's no gender, there's no gender specific reference in right. the song. Right. And again, it's for everybody, but it's really, if you listen to it, it's it's for everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm so not going to give away a statement yeah. about, about gay rights. So I wasn't making a statement about equality. That's just a joke to have to say that everybody right. should be able to do the everything. Right. I don't know why some people aren't allowed to do things and some people are. <laughs> <laughs> I get, again, I'm so angry about things, but I hear you. Um, so, I, so I wrote that song specifically without saying what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, but saying what it was because it's for everybody. Well, that's the whole thing, right? It's, it's, it's making it a non-issue 
because it's yes. a non-issue. So yeah, yeah I, I really, um, yeah, I'm not going to give away the lyrics because I want I want people to go and listen um, to, to both the EP and the album, frankly, because if you're not listening to Dion Powder Band, what the hell are you even doing with your life? But um, but it, it really, um, that one got me right away. You know, I was just, I was right there with you. And, and what's amazing about it too is that could it could work I wonder if anybody's used that as a wedding song, you know, I mean, just yeah. out there. So, you know what I mean? But it can work on. And, and that's part of the genius of the whole thing, right? Is that the, all the different levels in there yeah. and, you know, people can look at it at a micro level, a macro level. It can be for the general public. It can be specific to somebody's situation. And like that, that to me is really, that's a gift of songwriting, you know, to, to, to connect with people like that. And in so many different ways where you, the listener can almost kind of Rorschach themselves onto what mm -hmm. you're doing, but it doesn't take away from where you were coming from as an artist, mm -hmm. as a writer, um, which I think is, is so impressive. And I mean, I, I wanted to mention too, um, so The Light, that was, that blew up, right? I mean, that was a top 10 indie release, even yeah. here in the States, that was played yeah. all the hell all, all over the place. And I, I was listening to it and in my head, I'm, you know, I'm making notes and I'm going this song. And I, again, I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way because I mean it in the best possible sense. But to me, it was almost like if Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake and the Bee Gees had a musical baby. <laughs> it's kind of like the light to me. And what I mean by that is like it's so funky and coming off of, you know, Wolves in the Hills. It, that yeah. was already like, wow, okay, you know, this is, because that's, that's, I mean, you know, that's such a clear single to me, you know, like, I mean, that's, that's a song that you could put out anywhere. I don't think there's anybody that wouldn't like Wolves in the Hills, and and I, I think we'll, we'll play it in a minute, but, um, but The Light, I totally got why that was so popular, because, I mean, holy crap, like, the, the vocals are sexy, it's got this great bass line, it's really danceable, but it's almost kind of disco in a way, like, I mean, what did you feel like when you saw that one really start to take off? Because that must have been super gratifying. Or were you annoyed because you wanted some other song to do better? I know some musicians are like that, too. It's like, damn it, why didn't they like this one? So, Because I think all the songs I feel equally about, I, um, I, I won't put out a tune that I'm unhappy with. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I, I don't have a lot of stuff online. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rigorous process. But, yeah. but I really enjoy the light. It means a lot to me, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's a song that is a for me. It was a map from the bottom on how to come back up again, mm. and it's 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 that turning point. Mm. It's like, oh my god, everything's. I can't believe. Like I was in a really dark spot. Mm -hmm. I don't want to write about the dark spot or the way down to the dark spot, right. or or I'm sitting at the dark spot. Right, right. I want to write about the movement that occurs for for the up curve. You know, because that's what people need help with. That's right. That's what and I if need you hang around long enough, thankfully there usually is one. You yeah, just have of to hang around for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. true. So true. Yeah. Now so, that's that's I think beautiful. The, the yeah, I'm, I'm, and the music really sort of coincide as well with the message. <clears throat> so when you're listening to it, it's it's a fun song to listen to. Yeah, fun song to play live for us. Yeah. So we're smiling as well on stage, playing a song that's about being happy. Or yes. getting happy and yeah. finding happiness and we're like this is great looking around going well this is you know this is the light this is the light yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and there's yeah. A, there's a lot of um there's a there's a a thin thread of B buddhist teaching through that song mm. um but it's so thin it's it's like a spider web you don't really see it mm -hmm. Unless you walk into it, right. <laughs> you're not necessarily <laughs> trapped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, so and I don't have, you know, I'm. A, I think I'm a spiritual guy, but I'm not religious. So mm -hmm. uh, I respect any point of view that elevates the human experience. Yeah. But um, yeah, the light. I was really happy that it was getting a lot of attention because mm -hmm. of that reason. The song can be shared and spoken about, and yeah, if um, a lot of guys say it, but I really mean it. If it lands at the right place at the right time for the right person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much it costs emotionally or financially to create it. Mm. It's so worth it. Mm -hmm. Now I, I, I feel that from you. I mean, you guys all clearly, you know, it, music is a calling, right? It's a passion for you and, and you know, and what you're trying to do. And, and I appreciate that you're all doing it in a gentle way. 
you know, as I said, you're not bludgeoning people over the head with things, you know, but it's, it's just, it's opportunities to connect. It's opportunities to find what you need in the song. And, and, and I, uh, I, I, I really was pleased to see given the song and the message and the, and the, the ethos of the whole thing really just that it was so popular because it, it does yeah. sort of renew your faith in the musical humanity a little bit that we're not just listening to, you know, songs about people's butts and <laughs> shaking them or rubbing them what? or waxing them or whatever yeah. people do with their butts these days. I don't know, but, but it, I mean, it, it really, I, I just, you know, and, and I, that to me, that, that moved into expectations really cleanly on the record, you know, both thematically and, and kind of, you know, it, it, a different uh, vibe. And, oh, we're, we're getting the tour of the airplane hangar here. You, on it's, the it's, move, like, yeah. it's like dirty, rotten scoundrels. Like you've got this gorgeous, you're out there and you're blazer. You're just, you know, eating some sort of caviar something. And you've got this beautiful palatial, whatever. I don't know, Dion. It's like, yeah. well, the back of that is like a Home Depot or something. I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> no, this is my tool. My wife is about to teach the flute, so I'm come down by the pool now. So you can okay, okay, we could we could you know fully broadcast this poor person's flute lesson and just yeah, <laughs> like hey everybody, right. look at look at look at John try and learn how to play the flute Quite today. But uh, but better. so I mean so you know Im imperfection as I was saying you know kind of takes us um a rather expectations kind of takes us from the light into imperfection but i gotta ask you ryan as the keys player like do you especially enjoy playing imperfection because i feel like there's so much for you to chew on in that song i didn't for a little while because it was i was never getting it right <laughs> so, really okay yes <laughs> okay the first sort of few times playing it i'm like okay oh, i know i should be doing something here and <laughs> i I'm don't not, know what it is <laughs> and i'm okay. getting some eyes looking like there should be something happening um but now i've sort of <laughs> Now we've sort of nailed it down, or I've nailed oh, it down. No. Um, you've gotten, you've yeah, gotten I love it, it down. Yeah. It's great. So what, what, now what I know was my fingers the, know where to go. So what was the what was the thi was it more of a was it a vibe? Was it literal notes? Was it like what was missing? What did you feel like you weren't quite getting? Practice. Oh. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> okay, probably just, just comfortable. playing just, them over okay. and over again, and with the, with everyone else, and being able to listen to it and sort of go, oh, that's where it needs to go. Okay, here's where. Mm. Literally, the the movement goes to be able mm. to hit it. Now it's more of a now now it's more of a feeling when I get up there and play it. It's like okay, now I know where it should go because I've I've been over gotcha. it so many times. It's well, yeah, the, and that that's that's the thing too, right? With music, you know, it starts out all primary process, right? Like you're focused on mm. the thing and learning the thing and playing the thing, and then once you've kind of incorporated it into your DNA, then you can just feel it and play it. And so now, are you having fun with it? <laughs> Yes. Now that it doesn't now feel I, like now I understand. Yeah, now yeah. I understand the importance of of the the points and the parts where it goes, mm -hmm. and go. Okay, this is why this is the the section that was missing otherwise. Okay. And now it doesn't seem right unless I'm playing it right. Okay. So I know that you know I know I'm in a good space when I play it, and I get smiles rather than worried looks of oh my Glowers, God, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Dion. You've labeled yourself an angry guy. I'm. Uh, I'm not sure. Now we're you know getting just uh, you know pieces of beef thrown at him or something. If he was getting <laughs> on, on uh, stage, yeah. Uh, you, anger is you know it doesn't have to be throwing a tantrum. <laughs> right. <laughs> it can um, just be deeply intense and terrifying, right, Ryan? Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Around. <laughs> oh god that's the worst that's the worst you could i, I would rather that's... someone be angry than disappointed oh no yeah. so i'm passive aggressive the um <laughs> delightful that, um you know we we're talking before about all those parts joining together and moving in the same direction mm -hmm. imperfection is such a cool tune in that there's not a lot going on except off the back of what the keys are doing mm -hmm. and if the keys aren't doing that thing it, what I'm playing on the guitar doesn't make sense. It falls apart. So yeah, we were we were rehearsing the band. The, everyone in the band is so busy with their lives. Being able to spend time to play the songs together mm. is like Christmas Day every mm. day for me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we did. We decided to break the band down into sectionals. So oh, Ryan and I yeah. had a couple of rehearsals, just guitar and, yeah. and keyboards, Very and we smart. then I got the opportunity to explore the harmony and say when you're doing this uh, mm -hmm. like that allows me to do this right and together we become so amazing and and then it requires this vocal or requires this on the bass or yeah 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 because i 
I'm lucky in that I wrote all the parts and I know what's happening in them, and it's a shortcut to to getting it, you know, to, to mm-hmm. the spot where where that that particular song. I wrote that song again on acoustic guitar, and it's like that rhythm, da 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 da, and that's that over and over and over again. And the chord is parallel fourths, which makes no musical sense. Sense, right? But it works. <laughs> but it's because it's dissonant. There's that dissonant. It's that you know, we're learning to love the imperfection and it's perfect for that tune. Mm-hmm. And it's 127 Very meta. beats a minute. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's ex- 120. It's extremely quick anyway, mm-hmm. but it doesn't sound quick because the lyric is delivered slowly. Right. Yeah. And that, that synth over the top, it was just so much fun to come up with that part and to hear it in my head when I'm singing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so cool. No, that's... It, it's, it's, it's a great hook. It it is, and and it, and it 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 plays for me the way that you describe it, you know, because I I think you know, I mean, if I'm really being honest, the first time I listened to the album, because <laughs> I've listened to it more than once, because you know, the first time you sort of let it wash over you, right, and then the second time you dive in a little bit more, and and each time I listened, and some of the songs I I, I listened to three or four or five times, whatever, I heard or noticed or focused on something different each time you know like oh hey wait you know like i was paying so much attention to the drums on this song but i wasn't listening to what you know the the keys were doing or i was listening so much to the vocals on this that i wasn't paying attention to how the guitar and the interplay of those things and so it's 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 great because you you know you can keep going back and listening and hearing something fresh which is um that's also i think unless you're bothering to build complexity or not that build complexity. That that almost sounds pretentious and maybe even more intentional than you um, mean it to be. But when when, you, when your song has all these different elements, you know, and your and your album has all these different elements in, in each song, it it uh, it's just so re-listenable, you know. And and uh, so now I'm gonna have to go back and listen again. Oh darn! Um, after this interview, so that that I can can start to go. Oh okay, I yeah, I remember when you know Ryan said this or Charles said this or Dion said this or. Corey would have said that, but he wasn't there. So um, <laughs> I'm glad that the, the, it sounded like the flute was making um, the birds very angry for a minute behind you there. So I'm you glad that either the birds up, or yeah. the flute player have given up. Um, but uh, so I, I guess I would be remiss given that we've talked so much about um, genre and, and everything else. And just for both of you, who do you listen to? Who inspires you musically that isn't your band, Ryan? You want to go first? Oh, there's so many, and that's I suppose everyone sort of says that as well. But I think yeah, but know, they're always different and interesting. Know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a I'm a Ryan Adams tragic Ryan Adams, not Brian. Okay, Ryan, Ryan. without the B. Yeah, okay, <laughs> the, the acoustic sort of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a huge Springsteen fan. Um, okay, bit of a tragic for him. Um, Bee Gees, grew up on the Bee Gees, Love and being Bee in Gees. Brisbane too, as that connection. Right. Um, but yeah, all of those sort of ones. But I sort of deep dive into everything, and the the guys sort of put up with my Saturday nights. If we're not gigging, I will send through. Oh, I'm listening to this album. Here's something that's cool. Yeah. Here's something else. And sometimes it's like I feel like I'm sort of just throwing random stuff at them, hoping that something sticks. But it's like. <laughs> It's it's good because the guys will actually go. Oh, actually, that's that's really cool. I haven't, mm. I didn't know about them. Or oh, yes, I really love that too. Mm. Um, and we do have those similar similar likings in music, which makes it makes it easier for us to gel when you know, we can have those references too when we're playing. And oh, have you heard this song? Can you do it in that style or right. whatever sort of part might play? But. Yeah. So you're, my, so, my okay, so you're you're kind of building like a musical vocabulary then as a band, you know, yeah. to say, okay, you know, this is this is sort of what I'm thinking and it shorthands it. That's what, yeah, you guys have this really cool mind meld going among the four well, I'm I'm assuming Corey's in on it too, but you know, the, <laughs> at least the three of you, you all seem to you have different interests, but you you come at things in a similar way. So what about you, Dion? What turns you on besides uh, your band and the yeah. flute behind you? <laughs> She's my wife's teaching the flute. She's awesome. But the um, Ryan and I, um, one of our first interactions was, you know, back in the old days, someone say share your top ten albums mm-hmm. of all time mm-hmm. on Facebook. I yeah. put I put albums that I really enjoyed, and Ryan commented, going, "Oh my god, I like all this stuff too." <laughs> <laughs> Do you awesome. remember that man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was just last night. Ryan sent a few links through, and one of them was Burn Off. He's he's he was. Very early on in his career, he was doing a lot of um, 
looping and um he's got a crazy amazing voice and a really good sense of groove okay and who is the who is the other lady you sent through i started listening uh, to it Yola. yeah amazing Yola. I've, yeah. i'm gonna listen to that on right straight away i got aretha franklin vibes from her oh wow y- 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 okay y-a-o-l-a Yola. yeah Yola. okay all right y-o-l-a, I have Y-O-L-A. Some... y-o-l-a okay yeah. i have some uh but, my, my, my um <laughs> My who am I listening to at the moment? I can't stop listening to Madison Cunningham. Okay, um, I don't, I don't know Madison. She Cunningham. is from over there. Um, okay, <laughs> and she is like the way I would describe her to somebody who is new to her would be Radiohead and Joni Mitchell in the same. Person. Oh no, kidding! Okay, <laughs> that that's that's compelling enough that I'm gonna have to look up at least one song because uh, yeah. Yeah, those are not necessarily two names I would put together, um, but that could be really interesting. Okay, all right. She's phenomenal. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, look, it's older gear, I guess. Um, when I wrote I Vow, I was listening to Hendrix and Bruno Mars at the same time, of <laughs> course. That's a that's a no, but I listen to a lot of Hendrix, listen to a lot of Robin Ford. Um, okay. I'm a bass player primarily. That's my instrument. So I listen oh, to a lot okay. of Jaco Pistorius, a lot of Weather sure. Report. Oh, sure. Um, that's, it's, that's older 70s gear, that prog, prog jazz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, I really enjoy Neil Finn as a songwriter. Um, oh, of course, Brad yeah. Howe, Sting as a songwriter, phenomenal. Absolutely. Jackson Brown, um, James Taylor. Uh, Can't go but, wrong with the yeah. classics, yeah. Yeah, Madison Cunningham is. I've been listening to her almost on repeat for about four years. Four years. She's wow. She's, okay. She's, she's got a second. Um, second. She got signed. Um, she's living in LA. Um, but she's from. Middle America, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hanging out with uh, Chris Thiel, I think his name is. Why does that so, name uh, sound familiar to me? He's a mandolin player. Okay. It does sound T H E A L L, right? Yeah, I think it is T H I E L E or something like oh, that. I E L. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm thinking yeah. of someone. Yeah, the name sounds very familiar to me, but uh, yeah. yeah, there aren't that many men. He might have done something with Joan Osborne at one point, and that might be where I know the name. But um, okay, so so you 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 have it's funny. So you have a lot of prog rock influence, but I don't hear a ton of that in the music. Well, That's not a genre that you really spend too much time in, at least in if, in the the ones that I've you, heard. If I listen to, like, if I try and do a song that's where, where that music is, it's, mm-hmm. I think it takes up a lot of space on the, on the soundscape mm. and um, the genre itself does all of the speaking. You could say, you could say a prog rock band and you can hear their sound in your head and it's very full, um, mm. not a lot of room for anything new, but like you were saying before, and I'm so glad you said it, and it means so much to me that I've connected. You can't, I can't explain how cool <laughs> it is that um, that you've entered the music on that level and and said such nice things about it. Thank you. But oh, when pleasure. when people go into the the song and go, this gives me like this type of vibe, but then mm-hmm. again, it feels like it's new. Mm-hmm. Um, I I would struggle. I would my tool set wouldn't allow me to do that mm. with. A with heavier, prog rock. Mm, mm-hmm. heavier song. That I makes wouldn't. a ton of sense to me, actually. Yeah, no, it really, I mean, I, I, I you know, like, I, I kind of feel like, uh, was, um, Raft of Indecision, like, that gets a little darker, it gets a little heavier, yeah. um, you know, and, and, but it doesn't veer into that, and, and I think, you know, and, and I, you know, obviously, prog rock is a genre that's got a, a you know, tons of great music in it, so I'm not slighting it mm. in, the, in the least, mm. but it isn't accessible for everyone, I don't think necessarily. And and in for those for whom it's accessible, it almost seems to function as a bit of a, like a wormhole, right? You know, that that it's very much, you know, I mean, we, you know, our, our guitar player, um, our lead guitar player is a huge prog rock guy. And, you know, he he's he's encyclopedic in knowledge about that. And, and I'm learning from him. You know, I, I know a lot of the music, but for some reason I, I do and I'm 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 gonna process what you said more, um, because I, I think it relates to some of where I have a bit of a disconnect from some of the prog rock. And so I it's interesting to me that you've got a lot of that influence, um, mm. but you've turned it into something else in the music. Yeah. It's if if it's an ice cream flavor, it's a very strong ice cream flavor. It doesn't go with much else. <laughs> right. And right. and you know, in the album where you've said um, all the songs 
you know, it's very Dion Powder band esque. It's mm -hmm. like its own thing. It stands mm -hmm. up on its own. I think if I was to lean into those guitar influences and play mm -hmm. those riffs mm -hmm. or the, those electric guitar parts and those lead lines, mm -hmm. it'd really, it'd really, it's a really strong flavor. And yeah. I couldn't, it would, I couldn't smooth it over or, or make or it make work. It yeah, yeah. No, I, I I completely understand that. And 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 in to Ryan's point too, where you know the album works in pieces and it works as a gestalt. I don't know that. Pro I think prog rock might throw the balance off. You know, it's it is it is, it is, it is pretty, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not that I don't think you guys you know couldn't do it and do it well and do it justice, but that that makes a lot of sense to me. What you said. That Raft of Indecision tune, um, mm -hmm. the last time we played that, we uh, we jammed out the intro um, with a lot of Dirty Hammond. Was it Dirty Hammond or Heavy Synth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hammond. okay. And and wa really distorted wire guitar um, almost, but oh, wow. but not full, like really spacey. Okay. Um, almost like Money for Nothing by Die Straits at the start of that gotcha. tune. Gotcha. Almost yeah. this sort of a uh, delayed kind of uh, in the background. Yeah. To build yeah. Up to Doppler kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For live, we like to jam out. We do. We enjoy going nuts uh, yeah. live. And I can't stay still either um, to the point where I'm moving around so much. I forget where the fretboard is, but I'm just so <laughs> excited. What are you going to do? You should find a fretboard that attaches to your shoes somehow, and then you can just walk around, you know, and and, and have it wherever you go. And it's it's funny that you mentioned the Hammond because, um, you know, again to come back to same way, you know, I'm hearing, I'm assuming that's a Hammond on that, um, on that song, and and it um, it really it puts it in such a place, you know, musically. It's it's such like a DNA marker, you know, in a way, and so and it, and that can make it restrictive, but it. It wasn't there, and I think it's interesting that you can take a song like Raft of Indecision that is not, to my mind, Beatles-esque in any mm. way. <laughs> um, I got more of like a Matchbox 20 kind of vibe from that, you know, where's that really sort of that, you know, more angsty kind of, you know, um, feel to it that, that I happen to really like. And, and then that, that you would be able to jam out on that with a Hammond, you know, and make that work, you know, and then go and, and, and do same way and take it into this really, again, sort of Beatles-esque kind of, 60s sweeping kind of epic thing you know that that's that's i mean ryan are you you know are you just completely digging been, being able to just throw yeah, it out it's, I, and I think if we were allowed we would sit there and jam on it for all night long if we, yeah, we could absolutely. but i absolutely. think probably eventually um you know charles might get bored playing the drum parts over and over and over again yeah waiting, <laughs> waiting for it to play a drum part over and over again while and throw something at on, you <laughs> on hammond <laughs> Where I'm just sort of making it dirtier and lighter and dirtier and lighter, and I'm going, "Oh, this is great!" And looking mm -hmm. around, going, "Okay, does everyone else do the same thing?" Mm -hmm. But we would we would solo and sort of expand parts to make it work. So whether it's um, like we might have a solo section in in the record, but then go on stage and go, oh, "Actually, well, let's double that," or if we're feeling it, let Dion just explore and go because mm -hmm. we know that there is that potential to take it from that sort of level and then just go okay if we have that good basis whoever is soloing whoever is taking the lead of that section at that point they mm -hmm. can just go and they'll know that whenever they you have them yeah crash down yeah. we're there yeah. to catch it we keep on moving so it's like a it's a good um i suppose basis point to have our soloing and be able to have um the songs that are able to expand or contract depending on if we have a half hour set, well, maybe mm. we don't do that extended solo. Mm -hmm. If we have the hour, hour and a half, let's explore a bit more and see what happens. And then next time we go, oh, well, okay, let's find the middle ground for that and make it work for next time, you know? That and you've just described like the dream for musicians, right? That you can you yeah. can go out. I mean, like I think of like a, a Counting Crows, you know, um, Adam Duritz, you see him perform the same songs live. I don't think he ever performs the song the same way twice ever. And I mean, there are sections where he will just off the top of his head, generate lyrics that are nowhere on the album. They're nowhere in anything else. There's no way. And the band just has him and they will, yeah. they will watch him. And it, it is, it's <laughs> frankly, it's like great sex, right? It's like you, yeah. you know, you're going to go where you're going to go and then you trust the other person has you and you can go off and explore and then you come back and things all work out in the end, hopefully. But, you know, I, but I, I think that the fact that you guys can do that is, is, 
I mean, you have to be stellar individual musicians. You have to have some sort of a collective knowledge of what your band does and does not do. Um, you know, things that are representative of you and not so that you're not going to go far afield and, and play something where the other musicians are going to look at you like, what the hell are you doing right now? But, but you know, but also just that, that, that you have that kind of, I call it the Vulcan mind meld, right? Where you can all just kind of read each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested thinking about this idea that, that Ryan's bringing up of this kind of iterative, almost jam approach. I mean, Dion, you're such a, musical surgeon in a way you know the way that you have built things and you you you're precisely balancing you know all of the all of the pieces when you do those jams are they truly impromptu do you guys plan what the jam's going to be is it a little bit of both you know is it sitting like okay well we're you know we're going to play hearts today but we're going to do it this way or we're going to put in a solo here or pull out a section here or i mean how much how spontaneous is it when you're when you're on stage like that um, it's incredibly spontaneous. That wow. live l- live music and recorded music, you know, have their advantages. And I think right. the advantage of playing live is this may never happen again and this mm-hmm. may be the best time we ever do it. <laughs> and recorded music is um, let's do that again. <laughs> you know, right. let's go back and record over that and <laughs> right, see if right, it's right. right. So you yeah, take advantage of both of those situations. Mm-hmm. When I'm playing live, often we'll be in the green room and I will say, I've got this idea <laughs> and I could see people reaching, reaching for some ground going, like, oh, what God. <laughs> what's he going to do now? Yeah, exactly. But, but, what idea I'll have one? the idea and I'll flesh it out in the green room and then go on stage. And if the mm. crowd aren't in the right spot for that idea, I'll dump mm. it. So mm. it's okay. more of a, it's more d- doing it on the back of what Ryan was saying with let's do an extended solo. Most of the reason to do an extended solo is because the, the audience are into it That's and right. they're ready. They're ready to go to that next gear that's right you know, and let's let's take them there but if they're not ready for that you know well okay i mean you, you don't want to be the only you don't want to be the only like say if the band is the person and the audience is a person you don't mm. want the only one excited right you've got, to match, you've got to match the room right you're not playing for the band i mean you are but not only and yeah i yeah. know exactly what you mean and, and that, it that's only an feels important great if the audience uh um, right. you know um, playing their instrument properly, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I really yeah. do. Yeah, it I really, and feels that, great if those guys are on fire too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and that's um and that becomes almost like a symbiotic thing, right? Because you feed off of them, they feed off yeah. of you. I mean, it's yeah. it's one of the odd parts of being a remote musician. You know, we don't have that sort of organic, you know, feedback in the moment. So it's it's a little bit of a different thing. But I I know exactly what you mean, you know, that, that the audience is really another member of the band if it's working correctly mm. and they're good. <laughs> well, you to, sit on yeah. the fence, to sit on the fence a little bit, last Wednesday, the release date of the album, mm. I went and saw Kimbra with my daughter. Okay. Um, if I have you know a very, Kimbra. very basic, I know, I'm a very basic awareness, but not, not, yeah. not, not, yeah. not very familiar. So we went and saw her and she had the show timed to the minute to the second mm. um, and she said at the start of the show I'd like I'd like no applause in between songs I just want to pause and then use the silence to build the next song so the silence is 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 the noise floor the pl- okay yeah and okay. the album is called reckoning and it it's a serious outing for her and mm. it's not you know she's lucky she's got hardcore fans and she can take them anywhere and gotcha. she's allowed to she's doing that at the moment and the audience gave her it was really hard not to clap it felt mm. awkward she acknowledged mm-hmm. that she said, oh, this just feels awkward but you trust me we get into this and then in between <laughs> soon she was just breathing she took three breaths and then she's into the next one huh. and it was phenomenal so, okay because that could have gone i was going to ask you that could have gone either way that could have seemed absurdly pretentious and and sort of ruined the experience or you could be completely in it with her and it works so it sounds like it works well it, it depends how much you like kimbra it does sound <laughs> super pretentious because <laughs> yeah, the audience true. doesn't get to participate or mm, but mm-hmm. i think she saw it as celebrity she didn't want people celeb um uh, celebrating her mm. she wanted okay. to take them to the spot and she, it was super serious but um She's just a, an incredible vocalist and a great musician. That um, I, there was plenty of there. There was plenty of meat on the bone. Okay, she so she, she earned it. Yeah. Okay. It was crazy. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So I I I am wondering. Um, 
you've got so much, you know, going on with the, you know, the new album out and, and everything else. What in particular, and I wanted to ask you um, about the sounds of the city. Um, you know, you've got, I thought that was the coolest thing, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, and why don't you know, um, but for those of you who don't know, um, and I'll let Dion and, and Ryan describe it more, but I get the sense that you kind of like, you know, um, and not to be self-referential, but why I, why I appreciated the idea so much was that, you know, you know, saw a bunch of people who were really talented and were not getting amplified enough and decided to sort of create something for them. So why don't you guys talk a little bit about uh, Sounds of the City? Ryan, do you want to start? Oh, yeah, it's well, it's a good opportunity to celebrate our area, which is um, Morton Bay in uh, north of Brisbane, mm -hmm. and being able to find the artists there that don't necessarily get the recognition for what they, they do. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of covers musicians, of which we are some, Mm -hmm. So getting the opportunity to actually play your original stuff that you put your time yeah. and your sweat and your blood into yeah, and getting an audience to turn up to it and groove to it and enjoy is, I think, a big deal, meaning that we get to not necessarily headline where we are probably the last ones to go on stage more often than not. Sure. But that's purely because we've organised it or Dion's organised the, the production <laughs> around it. But it okay. means that, you know, the... The either the, the late high school kids can have a go at actually getting a gig in front of a paying mm -hmm. audience, yeah. or like a solo artist who grinds on the weekends playing mm -hmm. covers in a, in a pub for no applause, mm -hmm. and then writes amazing songs in the, on in their spare time can actually stand up and go, "Hey, I've got something to say." That's right, and I can do it. Mm -hmm. And we're going. Well, look, hey, everyone, come to this. We'll play some songs you might know because you know us. Yeah. But here's some other people as well that can benefit from having a live audience. Mm -hmm. And essentially, if they're there and they know us or they know a few other people in different the other bands, they're going to find like musicians. Absolutely. The ones that go, actually, I can go and see them next time I'm around. Mm -hmm. Even if it's at their covers gig or at right. whatever right. it might be. Right. You know, there's nothing better than playing at a, a gig where – you're playing and going, going through the motions, as it were, and then someone comes up to you and go, hey, yeah. I remember you, you played last time, or yeah. I listened to something of yours, and it's great. It gives right. you that little bit of energy. Or you see somebody in the audience that you go, oh, my exactly. God, you were it's from like, oh, Sounds of the City. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no, the whole great. idea is that showcase of local artists and being able to go, hey, we all have something to say, even though we're not selling out Wembley, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. That's right. And it started in 2021? I think was the first. It was just post COVID. It was okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, what I wanted to do was give the band some performance opportunities, but I wanted um, there was a lot of talk at venues about support artists. It made me feel really uncomfortable because mm. you know everybody's spending the, the roughly the same amount of time. Like, why does someone have to? We're all in it together. I figured, and I didn't yeah. want yeah. to. Yeah. I didn't want to explain the 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 cron the, the you know the who's starting and who's finishing. Right, the hierarchy um, and the yeah, all of that. Yeah, so the on politics. The, on the poster, <laughs> it's it's everybody's on the same you know width, um, and um, cool. the emceeing is done in such a way as. Uh, the right of the same amount of time and space and care and attention is given to everybody. And there's a pre interview mm. um, with the artist and then that's so you cool. Know, yeah. And it's more, it, it's more grounded and centered and uh, respectful. I think mm. um, mm. I'm not in a hurry to get on stage at mm -hmm. sounds of the city or really anywhere where I'm sharing a stage with another band because mm -hmm. you can miss, you know, um, an opportunity to be a decent human <laughs> if yeah. you're in a rush or oh, yeah. you're dealing with your nerves is difficult. You can be nervous and they can come out in many ways and right. that's fine. Everybody has their own experience, but um, yeah, just to provide a safe place, I think for everybody to enjoy what they're trying to say um, uh, more of that, the better. I mean, what, what a wonderful idea to say, okay, 
you know, not only am I going to let you be a rock star for a day, right, which is kind of what we're talking about here, but not the shitty version of that where it's, you know, okay, all flash and pomp and circumstance. And then, you know, you're, you're, you know, the, the idea that you're better than anyone else. You're, you've got an even playing field. You've got yeah. people, an opportunity to get their music in front of, of I'm get, guessing, a lot of people in Brisbane like that, that might not have otherwise heard them ever. Mm. Um, you're putting people on a bill together where they might even say, hey, why don't the three of us organize a show and we'll, you know, we'll play together. You know, I mean, you open, I'll go second, you go last. You know, I mean, like, there's so much, again, I'm, I'm, Everything that you guys are doing musically, you know, as a band within the band, um, it's this theme of connection, right? This mm. theme of, Energy, yeah. um, you know, you're building connections, you're building connections between um, musicians and, and, you know, with each other and between the live music and the recorded music. And it's just, you know, it's, it's so great to meet people who have such a generous vision of what the world could be and are actively putting that into the world and then doing it in such a, a, a way where it's, it's sort of creating its own new connections, you know I mean? Because who knows what these people that, you know, you have three bands that meet at, at Sounds of the City and they go off and they create something together that touches somebody over here. And then maybe they start playing music and they, I mean, like it, it's, That's it's beautiful what you're doing. It's I mean, and I love that it's bigger than the music, but it doesn't work without the music. I'm so impressed by that. I'm, I'm really touched by that, you know? And, and I think it, 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 because your music is so good and because it's so accessible and because you guys are so nice and so well-spoken, you're, you're really perfect ambassadors for this kind of thing that it's not this, you know, guilt rock kind of situation where you're supposed to, you know, listen to a song and then feel like you have to go feed a penguin or something and you've done your good deed for the day. You know, you're really talking about it's, you know, it's time to be human. You know, that's yeah. I'm sure that 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 album title, the EP title and, and the, the song title were not chosen accidentally. I don't think, Dion, you do anything accidentally, um, you know, and, and you're living it. And I think that this idea, so for anybody, you know, we didn't actually say that this, this is a festival um, that's organized. Is it, is it going on this year? Did, did it happen already? Or are you, um, did you have to well, pause for a little while? Cause of we, um, the life? idea was to have one per season um, because uh, Charles um, is not only a really super talented um, musician, he's a great graphic artist and okay. having one per season gives him a lot of scope for, 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 for posters, um, <laughs> but, so. uh, which is super important, you know, um, oh, that's yeah. how you're trying to sell it. But um, yeah, oh, so yeah. one per season was the idea, but now I think the next one we will do, we had our album launch uh, last weekend, mm -hmm. which was phenomenal. I was going to ask great. you about that next. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but um, our um, next Sounds of the City will probably be in October, November. Um, and oh, okay. I've got, I think I've got, it might be on the Gold Coast, Ryan. Um, nice. I've got a couple of. I got a Mars. I haven't asked Mars Sahari yet, but he he lives on the oh, Gold Coast. Oh, that He's would be amazing. Seventy k's away, and also you got to try to get Mars Sahara on definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a guy came. There's a guy called uh, Mark uh, Eaton who went to. I think he went to bed for a while and learned to sing throat sing, and he's doing that and playing a lot of blues and a lot of slide, like really oh, roots wow. music, but. He wow. lived it, and um, he's phenomenal. Um, I touched base with him on Facebook on just a post, and, and I said, he said, I'm playing here. I said, go get it, man. And he said, yeah. oh, when are you playing on the Gold Coast next? I yeah, said, well, yeah. do you want to do something together? Oh, he said, I'll so support great. you. I said, I hate that. Let's just do a Sounds <laughs> of the City. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And what that was. So, oh, that's um, so he, great. Yeah, that was only last night. I haven't told Ryan yet or any of the other oh. guys. But. Ryan, you and I are learning about this together. <laughs> Ryan, yeah, wait, more. Let's, let's do it together, Ryan. Here we go. It's just on the Gold Coast. It'll probably be the Den or something. I don't know. Den Divine yeah. or something like that. Something like that. That's the thing. It's able to get those con connections of whatever community. So even if we are the tying marker between doing one on the Gold Coast mm. in the city of Brisbane and then maybe like a Sunshine Coast sort of Sounds of the City Absolutely. tour almost, but like yeah. we might be the connecting routes between those those sort of venues and areas absolutely um you know and it's it is just getting those communities together and communities of music because it's mm -hmm. you know I, I love my little community just where i live and it's really yeah. nice to get um 
you know, the musicians in that area just sort of go, well, actually, we're here too. Put our hands up and comply. Absolutely. No, and, and it's great. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a really great idea because it is sort of infinitely scalable, right? You can make this a movable yeah. feast and, and show people off wherever, you know, and, and they can well, either come to you. Well, in the go, U.S. at some point, you know. Yeah, hell yeah, you got to come. And there, there are a <laughs> lot of cities <laughs> for saying. Yeah, a lot so, of cities. Lots of cities off the south. I was doing some research for a song called Passing Through and I needed a bridge for it and um, I spun the globe and I landed, uh, I landed in um, uh, the sycamore trees in the university, Syracuse. Syracuse? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, uh, there's a bridge in Syracuse which isn't tall enough and buses keep crashing into it. <laughs> And, it's not and, news anymore, but yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we're not, we're not st stellar always at um, matching up the sizes of things like bridges and tunnels <laughs> and the vehicles that go over them. So but yeah. Un under that bridge, um, uh, the, the guy left a message for a girl um, in my song. So that's, I found the spot for it and I wrote the bridge um, to that song called Passing Through. The, I haven't, I haven't recorded it yet. Okay. It's, it's a cool like Keb Mo type of tune oh okay that's a whole other yeah see i i would be like really you're gonna and i'm like yeah of course you're gonna do a song in a keb mo style <laughs> of course you are you just haven't yeah. gotten to it yet but no that i mean that's um it, yeah you got to bring sounds that I, it's funny i i would hope that the u.s would be as open to it um you know as you guys are experiencing there i think so i mean just you know from talking to all the indie musicians that that i do that we do you know i mean they're everywhere, you know, and, uh, and it's just, uh, it's, um, it's, it's beautiful that you're giving people an experience like that, because even if nothing else, if they never come back to it, which I hope wouldn't be the case, they could be like, remember this one time I was, you know, I was on stage. I played for hundreds of people. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, yeah. that's such a gift to give to other musicians. So, yeah. so, um, I feel like I could literally talk to you guys all day. <laughs> Um, and you probably feel like I already have, but I, I know you're very busy and, and you uh, need to get so much this. fun. We've had a ball. I, I wanted to just quickly before we go, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to play um, Wolves in the Hills because, um, again, as I said, it's 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 not an easy choice. But I would have to say out of every, everything, I've, that's the one I've listened to the most. Um, it just really gets me for some reason. I just like it, it's a, at first the harmonies hooked me and then, you know, it was just the. The bridge is all ethereal. It's a whole different thing. And as I said, every time I listen, I hear I hear different stuff in all of your songs. But did you want to talk a little bit about Wolves in the Hill before we play it? Anything oh. you wanted us to know, or yeah, has it all I, been can, <laughs> I can frame it up for sure. Uh, Wolves in the Hills is a tune, I guess, that's about being there for somebody um, who really needs it. And mm -hmm. um, I really like the song a lot because it doesn't there's a guitar solo in it but it goes mm -hmm. for four bars mm -hmm. it does what it needs to do and it gets out of there in and out um, yep it's yeah it's the production on that and this it, it's a sophisticated uh song and it's uh written for that purpose so i'm really glad that you've chosen it absolutely okay so let's roll wolves in the hills I cannot believe Your head is heavy in your head It's almost opportunity The hope inside your fate I know you've almost lost it Another round of pain Without the chaser cost it The war is far from over And I'm still here Wolves up in the hills Yeah Kittles and bridges burn I'm stuck in between Many of the hungry eyes Waiting on your strength to leave When the hope inside you fades, I know you've almost lost it. Another round of pain without the chaser cost it. The war is far from over, and I'm still here. Wolves in 
Okay, so um, we've taken, I, I feel like I'm in, I'm in the Dion Powder Band experience because it's all very meta, right? You know, there are all these connections. We've connected with each other. I've connected with your music. You guys are connecting musicians with each other and you obviously all connect within the band. And, you know, we've covered a lot of ground today and I'm just, I'm so, so thrilled that you guys um, spent this time with me and, and I really, everybody, get headwaters, go back and listen to Time to Be Human, listen to the EP through, it's five songs, listen to the album, you know, it's, 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 it's meant to be a thing of itself, and, and you would be cheating yourselves if you didn't, but just listen to it however the hell you want to listen to it, one way or the other, but I would recommend straight through at least once, but at the end of every interview, I do something where I put you guys in the Vox seat. So I'm going to ask you five questions, at least one of which you'll probably hate, but I want to get answers from both of you. So the first one is, and I don't really know how you're going to do this, but if anyone can do this quickly, it will probably be you, Dion, but I'd love to get answers from both of you. Sum up your music in five words or less. Um, accessible, uh, enjoyable, comforting, groovy, possibly confronting. I'm going to hyphenate that one and give you that, <laughs> those last two. Okay, that works out well. I like that. All right, Ryan, what about you? You cannot use the same ones now. It's it's like the family feud. You have to come over here. I'm own. so glad I went first. <laughs> I'm, just, um, I'm not going to get the 200 points there. Ryan's like, um, Dion took all my answers. That's works, what yeah. <laughs> uh, keyboards are the most amazing part. No. <laughs> That's my five words. <laughs> was snar your what? last word? Was that? Yeah. I'm going to go with snar. I think on the posters from now on, you tell Charles when he's graphically designing things <laughs> that it's going to be yeah. the Dion Powder Band. Snar. That's it. That's the that's, it's a great that's name the for band, phrase. And people will be like, "What? Yeah, like what?" That. You could be like, "Figure it out. It's all in the music," and then no one will know. Okay, I liked both of those almost <laughs> equally. So, okay, what is your favorite thing? And this seems like such a banal question to ask at this point, but what is your favorite thing, each of you, about being a musician? You go first, man. I'll go first. So, um, I think... <laughs> quick, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm going to take all the answers and you can't, can't take mine. Yeah, um, exactly. I, think it's, I think it's the connections. Like, in a way, we talk about that a lot, but mm -hmm. the connection for me when you're on stage and you look around and you see people who are enjoying the same thing as you at the same time as you, it's the same as going to a great concert too, and you're looking around, and everyone's in that one moment. Yeah, um, being that, being able to make someone smile, being able to make ourselves smile, and having that that time where we are together, just enjoying music. Like yeah. there's, so, there's so much time in our busy days where we don't get to sit and listen to music. 
Right. That's why I try and make a, an effort to do that at least once a week where I sit and listen for a couple of hours, just Smart. chuck music on in the background. Yeah. So to be able to do that as a gift, as a musician to be on stage, to connect with an audience, but connect with each other and just have fun. It's, it's just fun. Yeah. You know, it's no, technical, but it's fun. <laughs> no, that's beautifully said, but you're right. The connection. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. Dion. He, 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 he came up with a good answer now. You're allowed to Once say the same thing if it's true. <laughs> you don't have to come up with something different if you say the same way. I think um, music as a performance art is unique in that um, when you're looking at a painting, uh, there's a lot of room in your head to um, still be yourself. Um, when you're listening to music uh, or, or you're, you're witnessing performance art, um, there's a lot of there's a lot going on and you get to be outside of yourself as an audience member. Mm. Um, and you see people dancing and carrying on. Um, and you can really get an, or you can get the audience to a space where they're comfortable to be primal or, um, or whatever they want to be, you know? And, um, I, we've done gigs where it's gotten a little weird <laughs> um, and I've been I'm encouraging it as long as everyone's safe. Right, exactly. Then, yeah. You know, the people are exploring their own sexuality and um, and exploring that truck or whatever. <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah. It's, someone motorcycle. It's, it's the flute player. <laughs> He's just like, I'm done. I've, yeah. <laughs> like I've, we've made, I've made people, I've had people dance like chickens and be happy with it. And it, it, it's not that it's it's not a power thing. It's that yeah. music has the ability to take over mm -hmm. and tap into something and just, you know, help your endorphins, mm. just wash your brain. Mm -hmm. Even if it's only for 15 minutes, it's still the such a powerful vehicle f to help people release or unwind yeah. or yeah. rewire. Yeah. Cool. No, so, yeah, so I'm hearing connection and I'm hearing maybe vulnerability um, or safety. Um, yeah. And, and whether it takes somebody out of themselves for a little while or it puts them squarely in themselves for a little while, that's yeah. um, both of those are very good things. So, okay. I, I can relate to both of those answers. Those are great answers. Your this, I think might be the question that you guys hate then because so far you haven't seemed to. So first time I asked this, I, I did song and I, I was met with many protests. So I have expanded it to album, but if you had to pick one, song and or album to listen to for the rest of your life Jeez. only one what would it be i have I know, two it's horrible. Oh, you have two you two. can't have two all right what would the two be <laughs> i'll give you two on the edge of town by springsteen I'm sorry, say it say it again Darkness on the edge of town by springsteen springsteen sure so okay. i'd finish just probably my favorite ever album or um sean mullins um, his Soul's Core album. Really? The redone version. I love Sean Mullins and I wish he would come to Australia because I've been waiting for him for about 20 years and oh, uh, he doesn't. Sean Mullins, you're that hearing it listening. now. Ryan's waiting for you. What, what's up, dude? I'll be there and I'll be like this the whole time. Um, and <laughs> With I'll your feet up behind you I'll bring, and I'll hearts in your eyes. Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ryan is ready to fangirl for you, Sean Mullins. Yeah, Where are 100%. you? Uh, okay. I'm going to give you two. But only because you have you, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that because we had two guys that couldn't give the answer, so I'll let you get away with that. Dion, I might hold you to one, but we'll see. I have the feeling you have one. Do you have one? You can't do it. I, I it would be terrible for all the others if I named any. Um, you don't like to have favorite children on any level, do you? Not not among no. your songs, not among your band members, not among your bands well, that you help. You just you cannot you can't do it. You can't do no, it. No, it's and yeah. If I could say them all at once, <laughs> there we go. that's what snar. I take with me. It would be snar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you think of one that might have made the cut? And I won't hold you to the only one. Is there one well, that you that immediately popped into your head where you're like that could maybe be it? Oh, maybe the um, the live album by Stevie Wonder. Um, Stevie Wonder, Natural Wonder, because oh. that's a double album. See, oh yeah, you get a lot of music for your buck on that one. That's that's a that's a wise yeah. choice. Okay, his bass player is phenomenal. But um, Jacob Asterius's live thirtieth birthday concert is crazy. 
Okay. Word of mouth band, Michael Brecker, the Brecker brothers. Okay. Peter Baskin on drums. He's, yeah. he's like, I'm going to name them all. I'm doing it now. <laughs> People on YouTube watching are like, it's hour 17 and Dion is still just naming <laughs> albums. And <laughs> Ryan and I have curled up, you know, we're sleeping like this. <laughs> and it's all I probably okay. just bring out my record collection about this one as well. And this one. <laughs> That's I know. Really, it's we just really gonna just very question. slowly hold up different CDs and just put them back down. And I'm like, surreptitiously, I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's it. Is there it's a comment section message. for this? Can I? Yeah, there, yeah, there will be actually. Go so look out, everybody. I'm gonna have to lock it down, or Dion's gonna take over. Gee, why does this particular uh, YouTube episode have so many comments on it? It's Dion. It's Dion's <laughs> desert island thing, but the yeah. desert island is like the size of the entire world. <laughs> so, okay, this is it now. This is the big one. This is the last question. Toilet paper, under or over? I was always Mine over. under or over. Am I the only one missing? <laughs> so you know how the roll can yeah. either, you pull the toilet paper out from underneath the roll or it uh, rests atop thought... the roll and you pull it down. We, because... Everybody has a very strong opinion about this. I Just between us, I thought you said over the front or at the back. That's oh. what you meant. How do you walk your ass? Well, that would really depend on other things. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't answer the question you thought I asked you. <laughs> Holy God. Okay. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna let you regroup, Dion. I'm going to go with you, yeah. Ryan, because you seem to have um, been answered. It's easier it to answer. That. <laughs> yeah. uh, I gr grew up with Over, uh, and then since getting married, so for the last uh, 12 so years, under. Okay. So so it's been decided had. for yeah. you. <laughs> And now okay. it's unnatural any other way. Okay. So, oh, so you, you're not fighting your, your tide now. You, no, no. You've, you've assimilated this. You've there you go. I'm going to yeah. say, based on that one nugget of information about your marriage, Ryan, that it's a happy one. That you can yes. take something that you only knew one way for your whole life and then see the beauty in the other way because your spouse has shown it to you. I'm yeah, going to go with I that. Swear. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Tell your wife that 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 this random chick on the internet said that you're a really good husband because you you, <laughs> can, you got used to the, the toilet paper. I will. I will tell her that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I have tons of cred among, you know, <laughs> yeah. random women in Brisbane who've never met me who really care about my views on toilet paper. But, okay, Dion, now that we know what we're actually talking about, <laughs> that was a very close call. What where are we over people or are we under people in the powder household? Ryan, I reckon you should make that a family crest, man. I reckon <laughs> just the way that the room. Yeah. Wait, I've I've just missed an opportunity. I should be calling it the powder room. <laughs> ah, okay. There you go. That's why I make the big bucks of zero money. But yeah. All right. So I I mean I need to know what does the musical surgeon do? What's your preference, over or under? I don't know. <gasps> You don't I, know. No, it put, just put, is whatever it is. I put the roll on the thing, and um, I'm sure there's probably a way that it goes, <laughs> but I don't know what it is, and you I think the... my wife would have an opinion on what it is. Okay. You'll ask um, your wife what the right way was later. There'll be <laughs> a right way. I'm sure of it, and maybe 50% of the time I get it right. <laughs> this is true. It's like a USB cable, right? Or USB port. Yeah. So, yeah. wow, I think you were the first person I've talked to that did not have a strong alliance to over or under okay it, yeah it's not on you're my just, radar you're, you're you're switching genres to the very end aren't you yeah. <laughs> well, you can't face. even commit to a genre of toilet paper uh, over or, or, under. or a song what's wrong with me that's right i think there's a lot right with you actually ryan <laughs> dion um you know and and Corey and charles in absentia you guys this has been an honor for me. I hope that's not over the top to say, but I just, I, I am so glad that I met you guys. I'm so glad I got a chance to talk to you. I'm so glad that your music exists and that I get to listen to it whenever I want to. Headwaters came out May 31st, Spotify. It's everywhere. Go get it. Listen, you know, play it over and over, go back, find time to be human, you know, look up sounds of the city. If you're anywhere nearby, um, follow them on Facebook, do all the things guys. Thank you so much for, for, for meeting with me today. Yes, Christina, it's such a great way to start the day for us. Thank you so much. This is winter you, in guys. Brisbane, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That looks better than summer in New York. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty it's cool. beautiful there, but thank you guys again so much. Oh,